So we're here. So this is not enough, right? Because if I'm going to put a shadow in, I don't really know where it goes, right? So I have to, I have to know where the, the back corner is always. If I'm drawing multiple objects, that becomes even, even more important, right? Yeah, as it goes away from you, it, it will converge eventually. Yeah, as a linear perspective concept taken down to a small level for, um, for an object, basically. And we'll get to that when we do perspective. So once you're here, you can add a couple of, of details, you know, put the lid in. So yeah, that's a good place for it to be in terms of just a quick structure study. So your line work study should take no time. Now the uh, we're already familiar with like the free value concept, right? So um, that's basically what we're going to do today. So here we're going to extend it and sketch in approximately where this shadow is going to be. So you're gonna have to get out a light and you know get a setup near an outlet. Um, the rule of thumb for this is that where there is a change in direction of a plane, there's gonna be a change in value, right? So if you pick up the object and you're like, oh, there's a corner there, or there's you know some little shift in the direction of the object, then you're gonna have to create a value that reflects that, right? So. Um, in this situation, how, like, how many planes of shadow are there from where I am? Um, well, I'd say just one, two, three, right? And then this is all going to be light, at least in my, in my situation. So um, I'll start with the ground. Well, each side is going to have a different value, right? Because there's a corner there. So because that corner shifts, they can't be the same value. Otherwise, it'll look uh, very two-dimensional. Okay, so the first basic concept that you'll want to do is you want to do this, right? And then you want to go and make a different value for each of these, right? So don't do that, right? Fight that instinct, because it's going to be more productive just to do this. You're going to do the same value over the entire thing. and you just draw right over edges. So you can still see the faint outline under that, right? Or the faint structure. But what does that remind you of? That style. It's like your average comic book illustration, right? Or, you know. So this is an illustration technique to develop, you know, leave shadows flat and develop um, highlights and lighter areas, right? So basically what we found here is the edge between light and dark. Okay. So on a box, it's pretty simple. On other objects, it's more complicated. So now what you do is say, well, OK, because there's light coming from here, right? So 
I have, you know, a cone of light coming around, shining down, and so on. Right, and it's hitting this, and it's also hitting, hitting the ground here, and then bouncing back. This is going to be my lightest shadow side, right? This is going to be slightly darker. So I go over to this side, and I add another layer. And I can use about the same amount of pressure. If I switch directions, that can help too. Okay, so I made a distinction between this value and this value, right? Next, I have to distinguish this value, and this value is darker than those two. So now I have to get into the nitty gritty and get this a little bit darker, right? Well, it doesn't matter like if the distance is off right now, what, uh, but what matters is that they're each distinct. And you can tell that one is darker than the other. What do you mean by the distance? Uh, how dark and light they are relative to each other, and how accurate that is. For right now, it's enough to know that they're different. So if you squint at it a little bit, you should see three distinct values. Okay. Are you going to put a darker value on the other one? What's that? On where? Yeah, that No, because the way I see it, there's, there's light bouncing back. It's reflecting off of this surface and coming back. And we have multiple light sources, so. What about this top? The top? I'm just going to leave it, because it's a structural study, right? It's not like a full value thing. But we can see it. Do you want to see into the box? Mm -hmm. like we can. Yeah. If you were to develop this into a, into like a fully finished image, you would probably have some value there because you might have a brighter object, one with like more highlights. So that would just disappear. Um, the finishing touches uh, that you may or may not wish to do um, uh, here, this would be fine, you know. Uh, but you can go in and you say, well. I know that there's uh, a complete absence of light on the bottom of this right here. Because you know the, the box is just slightly curved, right? And I can't see that as it's not as dark over here, but that's still there. Doing that just kind of helps make it sit on the ground, right? And, uh, you know, if you need like, if you need to, you can do like some indication of the surface that it's sitting on, if you want. So that it feels like it's on, on a ground plane. Would you redo the edges of the box or no? Like um, the, not necessarily. No. Um, Later, uh, if I if I'm fully rendering like this whole scene, yeah. But the main edges that you're working on are just these where there's value. Would you put the lid in or no? The um, yeah, you can. Lines? You know, it just depends on where you want to take it, right? How much time you want to spend. You can come back and put that in. Yeah. And you see, there's a little a little teeny sliver right here. So you can stick your thumb under there. A little bit of light. 
It's very subtle.